There's three Spotify playlists you need to know about. And first of all, I just wanna cover the fact that Spotify is amazing because I don't know another platform that shares your music organically, gets you on playlists that are genre specific, allows you to pitch to playlists the way they do. A lot of other companies are coming online with this stuff, but Spotify has just been awesome. And I talk about this in my webinar. If you sign up below, it's how I hit over 800,000 monthly listeners. I need to actually update the title because we're now at 900,000. But when you release a song, and I should say when you schedule a song, one of the most important playlists you can possibly hit is the algorithmic release radar playlist because that not only notifies your followers, but it allows you to organically show up in other people's daily mix, get notified, and it puts the algorithm, the Spotify machine learning to work to share your song and give it a chance to get out there. Kind of like how TikTok, when you post on TikTok, um, it shares your your uh, your video or your photo or whatever out to people to see if it gets any traction. Well, Spotify is very similar with the release radar and seeing if, if it gets any traction. But the number one thing is is that you got to make sure that you're feeding that thing. Like when that song drops, man, you should be doing ads to it. You should be marketing the junk out of it at least for the first 24, 48 hours to really push it. It should be seven days. Keep two hands on the wheel here. It should be at least seven days, but really feeding that to trigger that thing. Because that's that's the first playlist, right? But what's, what's the second one? The second one is, is, well, if you feed this thing and fans start to hear it and people like it and it's a good song, we're, of course, assuming that all of our songs are amazing, right? You got to hit songs. All my songs are hits for sure. Okay, but let's just assume it's a good song. Then people are saving it. People are saving it, okay? And Spotify picks up on that data. They're saving it to what? They're saving it to their playlists. They're putting it on their personalized playlists, their workout playlists, their running playlists, their driving playlists, their sleeping playlists, depending on what kind of music you make, right? Like, not all of us make the, the same music, so it depends on what style you make. I sometimes love a good classical playlist when I'm just working or thinking. I don't want lyrics muddling up my, my mind, because I'm, but I want something just to, to work to and vibe to. But you're triggering that playlist, which is, which is huge, which is super huge. Like, in the webinar I talk about, you underestimate the power of fans saving your music and that compounding over time they're like little deposits and you continue to get streams and continue to get streams and when you start to add those up to tens hundreds millions of streams you start to make the money and what's really cool is is that you don't have to work for it anymore it's like you did the work once and now it continues to pay you it's called swiss dollars baby sales while i sleep soundly okay now the third thing i want to cover is the uh is the editorial playlists Okay, and that's where when you schedule your song for release and you do it at least two to three weeks out, at least two and a half to three weeks out, then you can pitch to the editorial playlist. And this takes time, okay, and it takes effort, it takes you doing collaborations, it takes you growing your, your Spotify playlist, but again, um, and planning ahead and not whipping it out. And that's one of the biggest mistakes I see artists make is they just whip out the release with no plan. They get the master and it's out. Sign up for that Spotify webinar. I really cover that. But you want to get a chance to get on those editorial playlists. And there's so many stories of indie artists with barely any following. And they get that one editorial playlist. And because their song was actually good, because it was a hit, it blew up. Look, I've had so so songs get on editorial playlists. Get 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 the get the eyeballs the stuff, right? I've had some songs that get on no editorial playlists, but because it was a good song, it got the traction on its own and it's one of my top songs. It's one of my top songs where there's other songs that got on the big playlist, but maybe they weren't that good. Maybe maybe Spotify thought it was good, maybe whatever. Um, but it got on there, but it didn't get that traction. It didn't get that full and really take, right? And sometimes you just don't know. Like, I didn't know this one song, uh, Firestarter uh, Remix, Doug Weir Remix, it was going to take off. We didn't know. And, and we promoted it and, and uh, a little bit. But then it just, it, I don't remember it getting any editorial playlist, maybe one. 
but now that continues to be one of my best songs and, and I don't touch it. And that's just the algorithm sharing it and fans saving it. And this is the one mistake I don't want you to make. When you have something that's working, don't go, oh, I'm gonna go do something else, you know? Oh, well, this is working, so I'm gonna go do something completely different and let what was working just die. That's what so many of us do, including me. I shared the story how I did that with an album that was just crushing it. And of course, I think I'm the Midas touch, and so I go and try and make another one, and it wasn't as good, and I lost all the momentum of this other album. Well, that's exactly what we do as artists. We have something that's working, and we're like, oh, well, I gotta go do something else. We always think more is the answer. Entrepreneurs do this uh, all the time. They're like, well, this works, so instead of feeding it, I'm gonna go create something else. When that's the wrong thing to do, you should blow up that one thing. This come back, comes back to the 80-20 rule, like where 80% of your streams come from 20% of your songs. 80% of your business comes from 20% of your, your, your products or whatever it is. It's normally a small thing that brings the majority of your revenue. So what I want you to do, and I'm gonna to preach to myself right now, if something is working, if the song is getting traction, feed that beast, feed that song, pour gasoline on it. Well, what, what does that mean, pour gasoline? Promote it, bro, promote it, girl. Go run ads to it, okay, feed it. And you might not see the ROI right away, but if that thing is working, man, feed the beast, take it to radio, take it to YouTube ads, make a lyric video, make a music video, okay? but. This is where I want you to hear me right. Don't go and take all of your budget and make a music video and have no money left over to market that music video. Because if you got no fans barely and you take 5,000, thousands of dollars, which is all your budget to go make some music video, to upload it to your YouTube or your social media where you have like zero followers, that ain't gonna do jack for you. You'd better off to do a simple, creative, cool idea video and then market that because if the song is good and you can at least have something dope, something creative, then go market that and because the song is good, it will catch fire, okay? It will catch fire all on its own and it will continue to spread, all right? I've seen it so many times. Like, I remember the very first song that I had was like a massive hit, still my number one song today. It's impossible. It blew up in Japan first and, um, after it blew up selling tens of thousands of albums and I performed it I don't know how many times live in the US and Canada and we knew it was a hit song. It was a hit song. Um, but we didn't shoot a music video for it probably for months after it had been out. Months. And then we found out, oh, we've got something here. Well, let's feed the beast, man. Let's, let's feed it. That's what we did. Like the, Japan was like, we need a music video for this. And so we gave them one and that just propelled it, right? Millions of streams, million, tens and tens of millions of streams, not just on Spotify, YouTube, who knows where else, right? And so that's what you gotta do, you gotta focus. Once you get that one thing, feed it, man. Don't, don't be so quick to jump. I know you're a creator. Look, you're going to create lots of songs, but if nobody is hearing them, my friend, then what is the point? You know, it gets really tiring and it starts, to, like, creating art is awesome. I love creating art, but I also like it when I know my art is getting hurt. It's getting, um, you know, processed. People are listening to it. They're, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, they're they're um, consuming it, right? Like, I don't just make it so it can stay on my hard drive and die in the needle in the haystack. I want to get it out there. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> you need to come to grips that marketing is not bad. Pushing something is not bad, and you need to learn that it's not a waste of money. Like, it's not. And if you don't know what to do, well, then you need to get coaching. And that's why I have that Spotify webinar, because I give you an opportunity to join one of my programs and for me to coach you one-on-one, -on -one so I can talk to you about your song release schedule, about your album, and put together a plan. Twice a month you get to talk to me directly over video chat to ask questions. All right, but you gotta join the Spotify webinar. Click the link below. I think you go to um, smartmusicbusiness.com forward slash Spotify webinar and uh, watch the training, You'll take notes. You get tons of value from that. You'll get tons of ideas. You'll hear my story, which I think will be really encouraging because 
I started at zero, baby. You better believe I started at zero. Everyone starts at zero. But I didn't stay at zero. And, you know, my songs weren't the best. I wasn't the best at anything when I first started. I was, I was terrible. But as my man Myron says, I was bad enough, but stayed in the game long enough until I got good at the thing. Like, I was willing to be bad at something long enough until I got good at it. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I was not good at things. But that's fine. But I didn't stay that way. I got educated. I hired coaches. I took courses. I, I put the, the money out there. I asked questions. And, and I learned and I grew. And, and I realized, wow, like, having hit song is, is really important. But how do I market this thing? How do I, how do I really get this out there and, and play for the long game? You know, Tony Robbins was so right. Like, we overestimate what we can get done in a day, a month, and a year. We underestimate how far we can get in a, de a decade, you know? And you're, you might not be where you, you want to be right now, and that's okay. Keep fighting. Keep keep pushing. Keep putting good music out in the world. Keep a, keep a good heart. Don't get jealous. Get hungry and keep chasing this thing. And, and, and don't quit. And you know what? Your time will come. I'll never forget... I know I'm rambling. I talk about this in my book, Fighter, Five Keys to Conquering Fear. Oh my gosh, you need to... I wrote that just because I wanted to help people conquer fear. But man, artists and musicians, that's that's the book, man. Out of all the books I've written, Five Keys to Conquering Fear and Reaching Your Dreams, because I really share the, the pain and the struggle I went through um, being signed and going into debt and trying to figure out this music game and just being on the, the cusp of giving up. And then Japan happened. And I'll never forget some of the A&Rs that worked at the label where they knew I wasn't getting treated right. I wasn't getting the attention right, but I was a nice guy and I was really putting in the work, but I just wasn't getting the opportunities as a lot of other artists were getting. And a lot of those artists are gone now, right? And when we finally had success, I'll never forget some of them saying, man, we're so happy, Chris, it couldn't have happened to a better guy or a nicer guy. Like, we're so happy it's finally happening for you. We're, we're glad you didn't quit. And I'd love to say to you that, you know, I'm glad that you didn't quit and that, you know, maybe these videos have helped you out and um, to push through because your, your time will come too as long as you stay in the game. But the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results, right? Like you can't keep doing the same thing. And so, of course, like you can keep figuring it out on your, your own. And that's fine. And I, and I did that for a while and I wasted a lot of time. Like I'm talking years, wasted a lot of money. Or I could talk to somebody or model someone who is already where I am and learn from them so I don't have to go this way and then this way and then this way and then this way to get to the top. I can just go straight up. It's a lot faster, right? So hope that helps. Sign up for the webinar, smartmusicbusiness.com forward slash Spotify webinar. Go schedule an awesome release. Go market it.